So, the first uh, devoir that I had given myself earlier was to read the introduction on the Calvin Point info text, uh, Var numéro 2016, de numéro 22, Denegation in the Clinic of Psychoses, Between Schizophrenia and Paranoia, Manuel. Madeira, Thomas Lepoutre, Alain Vanier, Dans Research and Psychoanalysis, 2016, 2, number 22, pages 167 to 179. Introduction In his article of 1924, dedicated to negation, Freud maintains that affirmation as a substitute for uniting belongs to Eros, negation, the successor to expulsion, belongs to the destruction drive. Initiating a dense reflection on the different articulations of the operations of affirmation and of negation, this brief text by Freud inserts, uh, as we know, Verneinung at the heart of a reflection on the distinction between clinical structures, inasmuch as a denegation such as this is the revelator par excellence of the structure of repression. Verdrangung. When Lucan in turn points out that Verwerfung thus cut short any manifestation of the symbolic order, that is, it cut short the Bejahung that Freud posits as the primary procedure in which the judgment of attribution takes root, he is radicalizing this tension between the determining condition of the psychoses and the primordial operation of affirmation, negation, for the neuroses. From the perspective of this tension installed at the heart of psychoanalytical psychopathology, because Freudian denegation presupposes the repression that precedes it, it might appear to be incoherent to think in terms of a psychotic denegation in its own right, and yet, it is precisely this status of such a denegation in psychosis that the present article intends to grasp. This was what I was trying to um, provide as a source of guidance to two friends today um, who had perhaps been introduced at a prior state to uh, Jean Hippolyte's terms, but today were brought closer to the dictionary attributions of the lingo around uh, Die Verneinung and the specific processes that denegation um, rather constitutes as a precision that I had proposed of the operating symptomatic form of the psychotic experience um, rather than foreclosure, which um, is usually the term that's shoveled around and perhaps makes it difficult to address it in terms of the real of the delusions that the return is constitutive of outside of the repressed but as uh, an experience perhaps to be enjoyed as a positive symptom. Um, I knew that the hallucinations in psychiatry and the diagnosis of psychosis are termed positive um, symptoms, the hallucinations, that is. So working with the real of the delusions is a way in to schematizing 
where the element of the names of the Father with regards to the psychotic experience are perhaps not necessarily without and the convergence of the structure of characterial logic or the function of character attributes in the diagnostic criterion that allow us to form um, structural hypotheses about the subject's agency are in juxtaposition with the Baromian knot that the analysis is operating under when a proper analyst is making use of the where the contingent factor of discourse is a mere movement of its syntuplet ensemble for its discourse in the universe proper to it, four plus one. So, back on to the text. We propose the term denegation. Oops, text closed by accident. Um, where was I? So, Austausung, let me look and find the page. We propose, right, so we propose the term D added to negation in order to indicate here at the outset the Askey's character, the outline character, that this will assume in clinical practice with the psychoses. The necessity of this clinical reflection can be stated in the following paradox. If Freud's original reflection on negation generated work that was chiefly philosophical in nature and that held interest for psychoanalytic clinical practice that, moreover, came to be recognized, and if psychoanalysts took an interest in the diversity of forms of affirmation, negation, making explicit reference to the psychoses, a search through the different French and international databases nevertheless indicates that the eminently clinical studies that attempt to account for effects of denegation in the psychoses as much at the phenomenological level as at the structural level are still very few in number. Among the few works that do confront this question head-on, we should mention a pertinent article by Marie-France Bonnet, who is, um, I can't seem to find her in the immediate, if anyone does find who this subject is before I do, please uh, shovel the information to me. <laughs> which has the merit of problematizing once again in a careful way the formula. I am not the one who has a paranoic mode of enunciation, which resolves itself in I know that he knows that I know. However, the article does not undertake an exegesis of the original psychoanalytic text <laughs> on this point except in an oblique way. Steering clear of Freud's text from 1924, and only mentioning the contributions of Freud and Lacan in order to distinguish denegation, strictly speaking, from Verwerfung through the collapse of the imaginary axis, a to, a to its duplicate form of itself. Both constitutes identification with the imaginary, but also fails at the level of the narcissistic identification that no analysis ever resolved its work under. This such high levels of tension that is of the libido, that is sex taken as the non-sexuated form in the subject as a primary state to what operates in the real 
better under its sensible, most precise, experiential image of the ideal without words. This relative theoretical silence on the subjective of providing a status for the denegations of psychotics, which are nevertheless commonplace, has been prompting us for some years now to put to work the different occurrences of denegation in clinical practice with the psychoses. Perhaps they should work towards reading Seminar 9, a first research project thus led to thinking about the emergence of denegation in schizophrenic discourse as furnishing the subject with the possibility to weave a phantasmatic outline. This research was followed up in particular by the work of Simone Mouchien and Paolo Gleich on negation in a case of schizophrenia. Those are new works, I'll have to dig them up at some point if I get around to it. Two research projects, which were carried out on the basis of two rather different clinical cases, tried to present denegation as a signifying articulation that is operative in symptomatic stabilization and psychoses, which is obtained under the effect of transference. The psychoneuroses of defense, I would suspect, would be a way to converge between how to operate that transference in terms of the ethical decisions put in the operation of its form. So what prerequisite forms of ethical engagement do the maxims orient the psychotic positions towards the names of the father under which they orient the castration as if they were the woman of their mother's vision in what later dissolves the Oedipal complex for what the imaginary both distinguishes as its identification stage and also its limit on what love can return towards the experience of the subject in the world. So this is where analysis becomes interesting to practice in terms of the subjects going under the analysance couch, their dialectic, of course, in its most premium formation for what ideals to search for in today's analysts. And how to direct the lay analyses of the future toward what theory teaches the practitioners and not the other way around, so that certification does not become an ordeal between what practice asserts as a certainty. And the articulation of its logic and what certifies its return. We propose to think about the success of a denegative operation in the psychotic subject as capable of constituting a differential criterion that would explain the choice of schizophrenia or paranoia. Um, I imagine paranoia here operating under the delirium of persecution, which I believe is what constitutes a symptomatic uh, state in the sense that Freud spoke of the choice of illness. Our working hypothesis shall be the following. The success of an operation of denegation would support the establishment of a paranoid structuring, whereas the inverse, the weakening of the negative operation, would correspond rather to a schizophrenic state if it were to operate what under foreclosure itself instead. Perhaps um, just a question I might be totally out of the ballpark at this point, but I'd have to have a confirmation from the writer. Anyways, onwards for now. According to the rudimentary schema we indicate below, this presupposes that we put to work once again the question of the possible forms of transition between schizophrenia and paranoia. 
um, perhaps one would be addressed to its imaginary form in Shima L and DFA on the symbolic axis, paranoia, because of its experience explaining what the exploits of the deliriums of persecution return to the criminological function for what can orient uh, proper searching for what under an institutionalization of the law in its capital schema form. Kant which saw this the first uh, leveraging point though let's properly note at this juncture that the leveraging of any poignant prospects of elucidation is not what constitutes analysis proper, though this doesn't signify that the analysis is without its juncture and points with the point of capiton that can solidify what is disorienting in the displacement of the original schemas of desire on its secondary stated form. The subject is instituted in a chain that instigates the desire of its bodily organ towards a dimension where its subjugation to the sublime is no longer properly institutionalizable so that the ideal of its formation returns a clinical model under which to practice. Perhaps, maybe, the resolution of the lay analysis of practitioners in the Internationale to be formed. If Lacan's work is what the formation constitutes, wouldn't its practice return the references under which its constitutional elements are nitpicked and returned and reformulated? I would say so. Um, so, symptomatic stabilization as a signifying choice. Mm -mm. I closed the page again by accident, so where was I? Oh, speaking of this relative theoretical silence, I read this motion. Okay, in this article, we propose to think about the success. I'll just reread just to make sure the last sentence of the previous paragraph to make sure I got everything in there. Um, two, two further research projects, which were carried out on the basis of two rather different clinical cases, tried to present denegation as a signifying articulation that is operative in symptomatic stabilization in the psychosis, which is obtained under the effect of transference, right, because the dangers of the, the fight to the death of the prima facie of the masters in contention to the voice war so each value that the hysteric returns to the proper agency of the letter um, which is its creator of course the one that has fought uh, the death and nonetheless is salvaged in words, his elemental becoming, which fights between its subjective position that the symbolic instores. In this article, we propose to think about the success of a de-negative operation in the psychotic subject as capable of constituting a differential criterion that would explain the choice of schizophrenia or paranoia, in the sense that Freud spoke of the choice of illness. I wonder if this is um, the schizophrenic of Deleuze and Guattari, but from reflective sight I would say there's a difference to um, deplore. 
our working hypothesis shall be the following. The success of an operation of denegation would support that between the virtual and the actual, there's a constitutive distinguishing of which in the virtual constitutes symbolic castration, which in the real returns the outside of the symptom. But more on why that is and if I even agree with it. I lost the page again because I'm a tool sometimes, but I will dig this up again. So in this page, in this article, right? So uh, constituting a differential criterion that would explain the choice of schizophrenia or paranoia, um, just diagnose their fears by asking them and that would help to attribute which diagnosis to give them, but do ascertain that from the certainty the best of orientations are outside of the form proper and that's how discourse is an elemental movement of what allows us to disentangle the symptom perhaps not by returning to it the reality outside of its its distinguishing proponents that make it powerful but by conditioning it to enjoying the symptom that it had initially deployed in the sense that Freud spoke of the choice of illness. Um, I believe that Lacan does underlie, underline in that that psychosis isn't a choice, it's more of a constitutional arrangement in terms of the societal positions that relegate to the psychotic, the, the real of the traumatic and the neurotics acting out the way may have advanced some positions that are difficult to engage with without the recent work around psychosis. Um, there's a group that was formed in Quebec and it addresses the psychotic cure and uh, returning to the psychotic uh, standard arrangement around which the couple is formed in its simplistic arrangement so that the psychotic shuisance is possible to um, make lasting of what was problematic in the initial our working hypothesis shall be the following. The success of an operation of denegation would support the establishment of a paranoic structure. So distinct from psychosis, but perhaps where the leveraging point could seal between psychosis and paranoic structuring the, the point of no return where the psychotic can depart from that eight-year reinsertion into the social bond that my finished makes Lacan um, condense from one of his seminarial workings. Whereas the inverse, the weakening of the de-negative operation would correspond rather to a schizophrenic state. I'm gonna have to listen to this again to make sure I haven't mistakenly understood something, though every set is distinct from its next, so that the initial was proper to its own. To the rudimentary schema we indicate below, this presupposes that we put to work once again the question of the possible forms of transition between schizophrenia and paranoia. Therefore, our starting point will be a historical remark about the nosographic situation of these two entities. The clinical reflection on denegation will then lead us to a necessary comparison with the semiological figure that is well known in schizophrenia, negativism, which may be thought of not as an autistic state of the schizophrenic patient, but rather as an attempt at cure. 
making this more adequate for a Delusian anti edipal angel. Next, we bring our hypothesis to bear on the three grammatical formulas posited by Freud as the pivotal point of the paranoid delusion, a mistake properly instituted so that the practitioners around its study could institute their own disengagements to re re-engage the proper focus around what had to be distinguished from the prior form that was mistakenly imported so that the ease of access to the symptom could be reduced to its lowest tension of by Lacan as denegative mechanisms or how to operate Jean-Hippolyte's analysis so that he doesn't end up being killed in his pragmatic position towards the master that represents death. So how does the symbolic overlay itself on an imaginary matrix so that the names of the father in the transference are not for the psychotics outside of the symptom without proper um, orientation. This will lead us to think anew about the place of denegation, such as it functions in paranoid hearings, which can constitute in themselves a scaffolding that brings with it a stabilization. How would that work in the functions of criminology towards which analysis has been in my vision the only practice that has done some positive work in terms of what doesn't monetize criminals so that it can exploit their work in unfair positions that give them uh, remuneration under what the minimum standard is already minimally too low for to produce an immediate appreciation of what in dialectics is rather immediate under the laws of non-emission. So, by all means, analysts should bear the weight of pushing the cure, despite the lenient liberal positions exploiting Freud's weakness, especially under what his criticism of Sandor Ferenczi returns to the clean practice under which Freud would operate in respect to the necessary movement and discourse. More on that soon too. This will lead us to think anew about the place of denegation, such as its functions and paranoid hearings, which can constitute in themselves a scaffolding that brings with it a stabilization, which I believe is the most important sentence of this little um, introduction. Though, with the taking into account of where this text is orienting towards, I will not continue the engagement to the reads because I would rather orient my practice under a study of the analyst's structure in regards to the Baromian knot where all structures of analytic Lacanian expositions or orienting perhaps uh, 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 an including of the paranoic fears of persecution into the outside of the social link where they're engaging into the, the loops of the relation to the Bromian not proper or not without the relative 
outsides that make their centralized forms necessary to return to first. So perhaps at some point I'll return to it, but only when I find the necessary movement that returns its memory at some screen level dimension to its extension under the relation between the divided subject and the graphs of desire from its first manifestation to its last and its fourth movement that symbolize the completed graph. What is its relation to the point de capita, its first motion? Can returning to the paranoic indentions made by Poe in his real life story and the ambiguities of his death implicate the analysis towards what could later return to the schizophrenic intervention after its primary states of import have been elucidated to their entire expected conveniences. Yes, so I see. Lastly, the final line in the development of our hypothesis will seek to outline the possibility the possibility in the psychoses of an operation of affirmation, negation of unbearable representations, a mechanism Freud posits as being constitutive of repression.